see y'all this morning. Beautiful day to be in God's house. If you are worshiping with us for the first time, we welcome you to this place. If you're welcome, if you're worshiping with us by way of Comcast Channel 3, I think it is, we're so glad that you've tuned in. And if you're looking for a church home, hope you'll consider us. If you're worshiping by way of the internet, we're glad that you clicked on us and hope that if you are also looking for a church home to consider First United Methodist Church. On this World Communion Sunday, it gives me great delight to greet each and all of you in that priceless name of our Lord Jesus. The Lord bless you for your presence and for your faithfulness. A special word of greeting to those who are joining us by cable and now the internet. As we begin our worship, let's join together in our call to worship as printed in our morning bulletin. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of one bread. Let's bow together our invocation. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, on this World Communion Sunday, pour out your Holy Spirit afresh upon your church and empower all of us and indeed all believers to be the light of the world, to be the salt of the earth. Today, O oh God, as we partake of the one loaf and the cup, send us out inspired and anointed to be the body of Christ and to work faithfully for the advance of your kingdom throughout our world for whom the Lord Jesus died. O oh God, open our eyes that we may see Jesus Christ with hands outstretched to welcome and to embrace all who are hurting and needy, whether in mind, body, or spirit. O oh Lord, open our ears that we may hear from the lips of Christ as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren. You did it to me. Our Father, open now our hearts to love you with all we are and all we have and to love our neighbor, our fellow struggler, as we love and care for ourselves. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord Jesus calls us, his church, to be a priestly body. And one of the great privileges that we enjoy and we engage in our practice of faith is that of praying with intercession. We certainly gather this morning in corporate worship to be a praying group of believers. We pray for those on our hearts. We pray for those who are suffering. We pray for those who are in grief. We pray for those who suffer in silence, whose needs and hurts are known only to God. We would pray today in our church family for those who are traveling and visiting with this being the week of fall break for our students, we certainly pray for them and for their safety as they travel and visit. We would pray for those within our church family who are suffering from terminal illness. We pray for those who are going through chemo and or radiation. We would pray for those unable to be with us today because of other health needs. Many are they across our community who would give almost anything to be here. But because of health restrictions and other concerns, they cannot be a part physically of our fellowship. In that regard, we are especially thankful for the opportunity we have through cable and now through the internet to share uh, these moments of worship in their homes with those who cannot be here. We would pray today for those needs within our community, our state, our nation, and our world. Indeed, the very well-being of our world depends upon the church being the church, upon us, the church, being a priestly body. These priestly prayers are offered not only here in the sanctuary, but through the week, in our quiet times, in our moments of devotion. I wonder if there are those on your heart that you would like to verbalize for us to be in prayer this week. Dale. And 
what was the last name of the family? Bustle. Any other needs? Today is World Communion Sunday, a very significant, a very singular day in the life of the Christian church. More Christians, more of our brothers and sisters around the world gather today at the Lord's table and break the bread and drink from the cup than on any other day uh, during the year. And so this morning as we gather for communion, let us be mindful that around this world, in every pocket of our humanity, there are fellow brothers and sisters gathering as we to break the bread, to drink the cup as an affirmation of our faith, as a renewal of our faith. Let's bow together for our morning prayer. Eternal God, our Father, humbly and gratefully, we gather now in your presence. Father, we thank you for this very significant day. Father, on this Lord's Day, we gather with our brothers and sisters around the world at the table of Christ. And Lord, we humbly acknowledge that none of us is deserving of this great honor. But Father, through your grace, we are declared justified. We are declared righteous. And in Christ, we can gather as your children to break this bread, to drink this cup, to be renewed in our walk of faith. Father, there are many on our hearts and our minds today who need a special touch of your hand. Father, they need a special measure of your grace. And so, Father, we pray as a priestly body that your Holy Spirit would be there to give healing and hope, to give comfort and peace, to give encouragement and affirmation. Father, remind each and all of us in our daily journey of faith that you walk with us, that indeed through your Holy Spirit, you indwell and empower us to live as sons and daughters of God. And Father, as kingdom people, we've already been given that gift of abundant life. So Father, may we give full expression to that life, regardless of the circumstance in which we find ourselves. Father, we pray for those unable to be here as they travel and visit elsewhere. Father, grant them your traveling grace, your divine protection. And Father, for those at home who would like to be here but are unable because of health and other restrictions, Lord, we pray that they might feel a special anointing this day, indeed this hour, upon their hearts, upon their souls. Father, we pray your blessings upon our church as, Father, we seek to grow, to grow as the body of Christ, to grow in ministry and in mission, in outreach to a community, to a world in such dire need. Oh, Lord, our God, we confess oftentimes our indifference, our apathy, our unconcern, our lack of compassion for others of your children who, Father, need that touch of your hand through us upon them. So, Father God, forgive us. We pray where we have failed. And, Lord, renew us today to be the people of God, not only gathered for corporate worship, but, Father, to be scattered and commissioned <clears throat> to be the Christ to people in need, to those who are hurting, to those who are lonely, to those who are lost. Father God, we bless you this day. We praise you. We worship you. We thank you, our Father, for who you are and for all that you do constantly in each of our lives. Father, we supplement the spoken and printed list of names with those other names upon our hearts, those names, Father, that only you are conscious of. So, Father, enable us today to worship you in spirit and in truth. And, Father, may our worship continue beyond this hour and beyond these walls. These several petitions, O oh God, we pray in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
Since 1940, this significant day has been observed within the larger church, the body of Christ. On this Sunday, more than any other Sunday, regardless of our denominational affiliation, regardless of our ecclesiastical persuasion, we join hands and hearts with other believers affirming our faith in Jesus the Christ. And in our worship, we give fuller expression to the body of Christ. Know that as we here in this sanctuary break the bread and drink the cup, this worship is multiplied infinitely around our globe. For the last 25 years on World Communion Sunday, I have utilized this format of worship. I entitle this format a sequence of shadows. It is a service of word and table for World Communion Sunday. As I read from the scripture, and as Brother Bob will read from the scripture, we encourage your following from where you sit. The shadow of betrayal, Matthew 26, verses 20 through 25. When it was evening, Jesus took his place with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed. And began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. Jesus answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes, as it is written of him, But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. 
It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed Jesus, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. Jesus replied, You have said so. May we join together in the first stanza, There is a Fountain, number 622. on the ground and prayed my father if it is possible let this cup pass from me yet not what I want but what you want then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and he said to Peter so could you not stay awake with me one hour stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial the spirit indeed is willing but the flesh is weak Again, he went away the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, and let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Let's sing the first two verses of hymn number 166, 65. Hallelujah, what a Savior. Man of sorrows, what a name. Jesus came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. When Jesus reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish, Jesus prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When Jesus got up from prayer, he came to his disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial.
63 through 65. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priest and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and the testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even at this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore their clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit upon him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy! The guards also took him over and beat him. The shadow of crucifixion, Matthew 27, 32 through 37. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry Jesus' cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull, they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when Jesus tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over Jesus. Over his head, they put the charge against him which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. May we join together as we sing stanzas one and two, Alas, and did my Savior bleed, number 294. <laughs>
through 49. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. While the sun's light failed and the curtain of the temple was torn in two, then Jesus crying with a loud voice said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. <clears throat> Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he <clears throat> praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds had gathered there for this spectacle, saw what had taken place, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all, this, all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance, watching his death. Verses 38 through 42. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one, because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices in linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where Jesus was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so because it was the Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. Shall we sing stanzas one and two, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, hymn number 298. <laughs>
our vantage point is Easter. Indeed, this morning in the reading of these scriptures, we remember keenly the intense suffering, the anguish, the agony that the Lord Jesus endured as Lamb of God. But as we well know, on that following Sunday morning, even before daylight, the eternal God of heaven and earth had raised Jesus the Christ, his Son, from death to life. The quality of life given us through Christ is that of abundant, eternal life. We should always remember and be extremely grateful for what the Lord Jesus has done for us. Indeed, he has done for us what none of us, what no person could do for the human family. It was John the Baptist prior to the baptism of Christ who said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The cross was no accident. It constituted no surprise for our Savior. Indeed, ever before he left the glory of heaven to come to earth, he understood completely what his incarnation would involve. It involved his destiny on Calvary's cross. And so today we enjoy the quality of life that transcends death. But the quality of life that we enjoy, that we live from day to day, is rooted deeply in what happened on that fateful Friday on a hill shaped as a human skull. On that Thursday night that Jesus was arrested, we're told in the scriptures that in the upper room he took a loaf of bread. They had just observed Passover. And on the table was a loaf not yet broken. Jesus took that bread and the scriptures tell us that he offered a prayer and after the prayer, Jesus broke that bread. To those men who were closer than brothers, Jesus said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Take of this, all of you, and eat of this bread in remembrance of me. And dear brothers and sisters, from that Thursday night to this Sunday morning, we, the church, his body, have remembered those words. We have recalled that setting. And so this morning in our worship, we come to his table, to the Lord's table, and humbly and gratefully, we take of this loaf broken, which represents his broken body on Calvary's cross. The scriptures tell us that Following the breaking of bread, the Lord Jesus took a cup. He filled that cup with the red wine they had just used for Passover. And again to these men with whom he had lived now for three years, he said, this is my blood. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you. And indeed for many, for the forgiveness and remission of sin. Then Jesus said, take of this and drink of this my blood, for I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. This red blood represents the shed blood of the Lamb of God, a death that he gave freely and fully so that through his death we might have life. Thanks be to God for what happened that Friday on Golgotha. And thanks and praise be to God for what would happen on that Easter Sunday morning. The Easter experience validates what Jesus did for us on Calvary's cross. And dear friends, until Christ comes or until he calls us home, our mission is to live out this faith. It is to make tangible the love and grace of God, especially through Christ. There are so many of our fellow strugglers today, even here in our own community, who do not know the Lord, who do not know the Lord Jesus. For them, the Lord Jesus lived and suffered and bled and died. We're called to minister to them, to make tangible and visible our faith, 
so that they too will come to faith and through faith have forgiveness of sin and that quality of life which is abundant and everlasting. This morning we come to the Lord's table as we are. We come humbly and reverently and gratefully. We come as a priestly body to be renewed in our faith for the living of these days. Let's bow together for a moment of prayer. Our Father and our God, from the depths of our soul, we seek to praise you, to thank you, to adore you. Father, though our minds can never fully comprehend what happened then and there, by faith, O oh God, we embrace what did happen there. And Father, we thank you for such marvelous love, an unconditional love. Father, as we now take of this bread and drink of this cup, may our worship renew us as your church to be indeed here in Calhoun and Gordon County, the light of the world, the salt of the earth, so that through our worship and our witness, your kingdom will advance and others will be involved in the work of your church. Father, we pray these things in Christ's name. Amen.